Eve. Hello everyone and welcome back to Banging with Chloe Beach, me, your host. And today I have got an amazing guest with me. Um, she is just she's gonna she's gonna make you laugh probably gonna make you cry with laughter and she's also gonna tell you some very funny stories and um, because she is in fact a comedian but first just to make you all aware again the instagram and the tiktok is banging with chloe v pod please rate review and subscribe i really appreciate all of the love that we are getting we've seen all of your dms and we really appreciate it if you do send in some of your dilemmas, toxic situations or anything that's going on in your life, if you want my advice. But I mean, I am single and my life is a little bit of a fucking car crash. So if you do want relationship advice, I'd probably, I'd probably vouch on the guest for you to listen to that advice. My amazing guest this week is the amazing... Dum, dum, dum... Grace Campbell! <laughs> Woo! So Grace, you've been about. You're an author, a podcast host, a comedian, and you've literally just returned from performing your new show at the Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. It's been a busy summer. Wow. I didn't even get to go on holiday. Did you not? Well, I went away for three days last weekend. Oh, so you've been on holiday. It's yeah, not a very long girl. one. Did you? Yeah. Out of all places. And my friend was performing at a festival and then we met Liam Gallagher. It was lit. Is that the one that's like, you're like, baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bees my and honey, idol, money. as in the yeah. per- my spirit animal, yeah. Oh my God, is mm. that the one with the long hair and the glasses? Mm. With like the... The, the, the... the better brother. The Reebok workouts. Mm. Yeah. That's his style, yeah. really, isn't it? Well, he now wears like Stone Island puffer jackets with his hood up. Love it, that's my, my type. perfect man. That's, that's my, my type. type! That's what I oh always say. And like, boys who try and get with me, I'm like, my. I just want to go out with a guy who wears head to toe Stone Island. So we've just established, oh my God, I think you're the first person that I've spoken to that has the same type as me. Mm. Cause all my friends are like, ugh, why are you going out of him for? Yeah, so I always say like, my type is, um, men who would have played football professionally if they hadn't injured their knee in your right? So like, I've always gone out with men who are like, <laughs> Failed footballers. I've heard like, that story so many times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody's met that man. Yeah. But that's always, that's my kryptonite. Like, whenever I date someone, like, off of that, I'm like, for, it's nice for a minute because you're, like, mildly different and maybe have, like, less ego. Yeah. But then I get so bored. Yeah. And then I end up just going just back going on. Back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I wish there was, like, a service for, like, mm. those kinds of men. Well, do you know what? There's an app, right, that's about men in uniform I thought about going on it before because I love a man in uniform like I don't know like a firefighter or something like that but I really think we should create an app just for for fallen through footballers yeah and people Sony. that love well, Nike Air Max sponsor it who? Stone Island. Yeah. Oh, I'd be fucking minute. <laughs> that would be amazing. Can we get on that? We need to get on that because I would be Keiko. That's jokes because that's why I always say like whenever like whenever my friends are disappointed that I end it with someone, I'm like, yeah, but he wasn't like... He wasn't chavvy enough. He wasn't dressing how yeah. I wanted him to dress. So if you were to describe your like perfect ideal man, looks aside, would it be like that rough, ready, like mm, someone that kind of disrespects you a little bit because mm, that's love. me music I to love, my ears. I love a man that is emotionally <laughs> unavailable yeah yeah I love I it I love a really like unhealthy like doesn't know how to regulate their emotions kind of man who little bit spoke. of toxic yeah yeah just but like amazing in bed um, <laughs> yeah. you know someone that had to like work really hard to go down <laughs> to get to go down on me like it's not straight away and they make a big deal of it someone who says like I will have sex with you on your on your period, but I'd rather not. That kind yeah. of man. Yeah. And then you That's get all of dream. those. You get all of those complexes, all of those insecurities. But the red flags, we just have mm. to ignore them, don't mm. we? Yeah. Well, I get so bored when I'm seeing someone who's like normal, <laughs> mentally healthy. <laughs> I know. It's so bad. Do you know what? I um, Do you have conversations with your family and stuff or your friends about, like, the types of men that you attract and that you want? Because yeah. Because well, I was having a conversation the other week 
And this morning <laughs> with one of my managers, and they said to me, Chloe, why do you go for the same men? You're stuck on this hamster wheel in this cycle. And like, yeah, but my last boyfriend was 39, yeah? Quite old, I'm 23. Don't judge, please. I thought I'd switch it up a little bit. And my previous partner before that was in his 30s, because I think, right, well, I need to try and break that toxic cycle for going for men that are a bit different to my usual type. Do your family members or friends tell you to do that or...? Oh, it's really interesting. Like, the there's, like, a few people that they... Like, my friends are always, like, like wistfully talk about one guy that I saw for a period of time because they think he was, like, the best person that I ever saw. But that's because he was, like... He was so, so weird <laughs> that, like, he was constantly entertaining to have around. So yeah. they really miss him because he was, like, the weirdest person that anyone's ever met. Like, honestly, Amazing. If he was here right now, you'd be like, what the fuck? He once woke me up in the middle of the night and was like, do you think people still listen to One Direction's music? <laughs> like, he woke me up. I was asleep. It what was, like, four in the morning. You're joking. And, like, and I was like, is that why you've woken me? Up. So they like really miss him, and I'm like, but you guys don't understand that was not a sustainable relationship. Like yeah. I couldn't have actually imagined my life with someone who was that bizarre because it was yeah. like I felt like I was babysitting him so much of the time. Oh no! But so they really like, but then they they keep seeing when I get into the same cycle of like the similar person. They just like they're so ready to be like, okay, like should yeah. we should we start thinking of other options now? Yeah. But they're all my like most of my best friends are in relationships, so it's like. <gasps> Same. Yeah. Well, no, not same. No, Coco and Nicole are single. Like, really. Yeah, I've single. got a few really fun single friends, and we're having a great time. And look, people <laughs> in relationships, like, obviously, you know, <laughs> just go to another part of the world. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole like where we're. Ge I'm 28, and where we're gearing up to like people getting engaged yeah, and like having babies. That next level of thing. And then me and my single friends, we feel like we're slightly just on a completely different planet. And yeah. I don't even know if I'm like ready to be yeah. involved in that kind of stuff. I think in those type of scenarios, right, when I'm in a relationship or even when I'm single, I have two different chats. Like, you know, the group chat yeah. with your friends. One's called like sexy slags. <laughs> and then the other one's called like, um, let's go girls. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's possible if you just believe. Do you know what I mean? Like there's two different yeah, mindsets. I know. Of, of, I mean, I'm... But also we've started like, I had this crazy night out last weekend with like two of my single friends and it was like exactly like how like I want, if I'm single, I want my life to be like. And then we felt like we couldn't really talk about it on our WhatsApp group with like all of our friends who are in relationships because they just, it's not like they're like, judgmental it's just like they're on they a don't completely get it. different level they're not stuck in a dick every weekend yeah, 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 they're exactly. like they're, they're actually settled down yeah they're going to bed at like yeah. 11 on the saturday Fuming. night which is just so dry anyway <laughs> um but so we have a completely different spread for mm. just to talk about like mm -hmm. you know the man the i brought home who was like heavily down. on acid Oh no, what did that happen? <laughs> yeah, Recently. yeah. Recently. Yeah, I met this guy and I thought he was like chill. And then I realised, like, after a few hours hanging out with him, that he was really on acid. And was was like, he? Yeah. Did he not tell you? No. Like a pre warning. Just, and then he was just like, the colours. And I was like, all right, drop me out. <laughs> what did you do? Did you just, just see you later. Yeah, yeah. 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 You spoke to him soon. Well, it's a bit, no, but it's a bit like when one person's on a drug and the other person's yeah. not. It's like. But was he wearing Stone Island? No, absolutely oh, not. Oh, definitely not. He was not wearing. <laughs> oh no, what? This is such an ick for me, but when people wear like, um, what the, you know, like the inspector, like long, like trench coats, like those okay. coats. Okay. Like a beige one. Okay. Sorry. On acid. Exactly. Posh businessman. <laughs> yeah. Turning up. Yeah, like financial advisor on acid. Wow. That's another type of mine. You know how to pick them. <laughs> you do know how to pick them. <laughs> well, because we're on the topic of that, right? Obviously, this podcast is about sex, dating, breaking stigmas and stuff like that, right? And I've got to ask this question because you're funny as fuck and I need to ask it. What's your favourite sexual story to tell? Oh, Because wow. I feel like you've, <clears throat> you've got some wild stories. <laughs> we're two minutes in and we're talking about a guy in a trench coat taking us <laughs> I love it. It's like my mind goes blank, yeah, and I wish my best friend was here because she'd be like, I mean, probably the time that I had sex in the Vatican City. What's is, the Vatican City? That's where the Pope lives. 
Oh, bless him. Was he there? <laughs> Don't play this episode to your nan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She'd be livid. She's religious. Um, yeah, the Pope was fuming. No, it was like, we... <laughs> <laughs> I oh. met this guy and then I was obviously in Rome on holiday and then I was like, well, you know, well in Rome, as they say. Um, so we broke into the gardens of the Vatican wow. at night time. This just sounds really romantic. <laughs> <laughs> My typical Friday night, yeah, I'll have you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's true romance. Um, that's. I'm trying to think, like, what's yours? Oh, God. Because then it will it will trigger some memories in me. Um, I was actually having sex with someone once after the third date, and reverse cowgirl position, and he turned round and was sort of really awkward. Because my brother's actually in the room, but love you, love you, cover your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my brother to, to, to look at the behind the scenes of the podcast. No, I'm talking about sex. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah, and he actually, whilst I was doing my thing, um, he shouted out, oh, you ride me so much better than my ex. <gasps> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Wow. Ridiculous. Wow. And I hope she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Tag her if you know who she is. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. So it's not like that crazy. <laughs> I once, when I was getting with someone and I wanted it to end, I um, I said, <laughs> this person was like fingering me, and then, I, and then I said, I wanted I wanted this person to go, so I was like, oh, my ex used to finger me quite well, <laughs> and then they left. Oh, no. I know, it was really See, bad. See, when people tell stories like this, it's really hard for me to envision how it actually plans out. So do they just... Because I couldn't ever imagine that happening. Do you just but do say you, it? OK, then, do you ever... This is what... This is what help me the with thing stuff that, like this. Yeah, no, but this is what stresses me out, right? Like, in general, being single is that you're opening yourself up to, like someone being in your house and you wanting them to leave. Like, so, so I got with someone recently and they just really were overstaying... He was overstaying his welcome very mm -hmm. much so. And I was like, how many times can I, like, clap my hand and be like, right, what's your plan today then? Like, to get, get him to go. Yeah. So then I had to create this whole long narrative of, like, oh, I pretended that someone called me. I was like, someone I used to see is about to come round, so, like, you better go now because, you know... He wears Stone Island. Like <laughs> he's fucking coming. You hurry up. And then I was like, chop chop. And then he left. So it's like, yeah. I always stress out about just being like, can you go? I always feel like I have to create yeah. this narrative of like, yeah. oh, my ex used to do that. So like, maybe that will make you realise that I don't want you to be right. here anymore. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I need a bit more of a backbone when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, only recently I've stopped faking orgasms. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's fair. Like, I think sometimes. If you're sleeping with someone new... You want to make them feel nice, and well, also, you? maybe you don't know them well enough and don't feel comfortable enough with them to be like, yeah, I didn't come. Or maybe, like, they're jarring you and you just want it to be over. Yeah. So you just, like, want to... I, I, can, I can understand, like, when it's a new person to, like, you know, I don't fake orgasms. I'm not saying to do that because it misleads people into thinking they're good at bed. And they're good not. Good in bed when they're not. Someone actually said to me the other week, right, because I thought it was, like, a nice thing to do because I'm such a people pleaser. So when I'm having sex, I'm like, oh, yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, one thing I, I don't ever say is daddy. Oh, no. Yeah. I, just, I don't know how you went from that to that. but no, okay. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was from just faking like, orgasms mm, to daddy, um, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> it's the people-pleasing thing, like... And that's also linked to guys. Sometimes they express what they want you to say. If I'm not saying stuff that turns them on, sometimes they're like, tell me I'm the man. And I'm like, you're the man. <laughs> but I don't want to like say that. it. <laughs> I don't actually want to fucking say it. No, and you're not the yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but don't say it. No. Don't say it. And that also kind of coincides but, with faking orgasms. Because yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to say something I don't want to say. And that's also very empowering to a woman to not actually be faking the orgasm. But if you think, right, the more people you're honest with about like okay say if you fake orgasms with someone that you see for like ages then they go you it ends they go and start sleeping with someone new it's like there's a bit in sex in the city where miranda's sleeping with this guy and she's like um 
faking orgasms because he thinks he, he's really bad at sex and he, he thinks he's making her come. And then she one day is like, I'm going to tell him the truth, tells him the truth, and he's like, well, nobody's ever told me this before. And she's like, that's because everyone was lying to you. So when if you're that person who's the whistleblower <laughs> who reveals to them that they are not up to scratch, you're going to give more people in the future better orgasms. That's how I always... It's like my legacy. Saving so the world. My legacy is I've taught so many men how to give better head and be better at fingers and that will they'll go on in the world they're not my boyfriends or I'd, I'd have no ownership of them but they'll go out and give women better sex and that wow. will make the world go round so that's my karma <laughs> Do you know what, That's right? good karma. I love that for you because mm. I'm the type of girl to be very jealous and bitter for my exes and I'd be like yeah you're great in bed and then if they do go and sleep with another girl, be like, I'll like, yeah, teach do that them, thing where you fart. I'll teach them how to, like, finger badly. Yeah. Just so they don't make the next girl come. Well, listen, there's two different types of men to me. There are, like, people, like, like exes, exes, who I'm like, I hope you never have sex ever again <laughs> yeah. after you leave me. And then there are people who I'm like, I don't really care about you. So yeah. go and... Just go and live your life. Go forth and give I'm women orgasms. You, I'm letting you free. Yeah. Free like a bird. Well, your comedy, right? So if we go from <laughs> faking orgasms to your comedy. So it centers a lot around sex and relationships. And for me, what I would really want to know, and I'm sure everyone else listening as well or watching, um, where did that start? Like, when did you first start writing comedy? Was you just like at home as a kid, really funny, and your mum and dad or whatever would just be like, oh, you're really funny. Why don't you start writing these down? Or was you just... Is that something you've always wanted to do? I think I'm. <clears throat> I come from like my dad is probably the funniest person I've ever met, and then like my friends from school are like insanely funny. So I actually think like in the people in my life, I'm not even like more funny or less mm. funny than anyone. Like we're all just like ridiculous. But I've always um, been so eager to shock people in mm -hmm. the way that I think probably you are as well. Like yeah. I love the feeling I get from like shocking people and saying shit that's just like, sorry, am I allowed to swear? Of course you yeah. are. So, oh my God, we've yeah. just been talking about fucking for like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to swear? <laughs> of course you that are. That was very the royal family of me. Um, <laughs> um, so I, I love, I love that. And I, I've, so when I started to eventually do stand up, it wasn't like I, set out to do loads of stuff about like sex and relationships but it was more like I love saying things that people are just like I can't believe you just said that and it's really mm. weird because in my head yeah the world is like so progressed and all of this stuff is really normal but I still get so many people being mm. like oh my god that bit you did like I can't believe you said that but it's like so true but I can't believe you like said it out loud and yeah. I'm like it's weird to me that it's not mm -hmm. just like normal that everyone yeah. like, talks about sex so I like I like that I like being able to and especially like when men come to my shows I love like challenging yeah. men and making Definitely. them feel mildly uncomfortable yeah I do that on all my dates yeah, exactly. All my dates. Mm. I love it. Even when I'm having, like, a conversation with someone over the phone, I'll, like, say certain things. Like, especially now since I've started this podcast, it's it's almost liberating for me to be able to talk so openly about sex because guys just like, like that. Guys have labelled me for years. Mm. And I'm like, do you know what? If you're going to call me this, that or this, I'm just going to fucking own it. Yeah, totally. Because whether I do it and make money from it or not... Do you know what I mean? But also they only do that because it really intimidates them. Like, that's mm. the only reason why, like, men can't handle it when women are just, like, so sexually, like... It's not even... I always say it's not like um, I'm, like, sex... Uh, it's not like I'm, like, really kinky and, like, into, like, BDSM and shit. I'm just very open about my sex life. And mm. men always think that that means one thing because they can't handle it because it, like... It challenges something in them. But it's that which insecurity of, to. oh, fuck... She might leave me, she might cheat on me, she might get with, is she easy? Mm. Does she have sex as soon as she meets someone? And, like, it's that stigma attached to but it, But what do you it? think about that, right? So, like, the other day, um, <clears throat> I've got a male friend who was seeing someone and then he was like, you know, it was like, I really liked it because she said, we're not, we're not having sex till the third day. And who said that? The, my friend said that about this girl that he was seeing, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and he was like, and I really liked it. And I was like, okay, well, I think that's really i i hate that if I, I, it makes me i basically think yeah that we're taught that like 
if a woman have se- has sex on a first date, she's one type of woman, mm-hmm. and that's what men think. Yeah. And then they perpetuate that onto us. They could not be any more wrong. Yeah, exactly. If you have sex on the first date, you're this person, and that means that you're not, I don't know, like a relationship person or not someone that I, like, see a future with. Therefore, I had to make it really clear that I'm waiting till the third date mm. to have sex with you. Because I want you to think I'm like... See, I, it's a bit, I, I To find be honest it, with you, if I was to say to a guy... I'm not going to have sex till the third day. To be honest with you, that's almost like I'm deflecting from the truth because why should I have to say that? Exactly. Well, it's more to be like... Also, spoiler alert, she didn't. Um, ah! <laughs> I know. I've, I've, but I'm, that's I'm what I am mean. guilty of that, though. I'm so, guilty of that. Which is fine, yeah, but, like, it just annoys me. It annoys me because it makes me feel like... Um, it's this like Madonna whore complex that we're all like that like women are pitched as either being like perfect, mm. like virgin, whatever. Mm. Like I'm gonna hold out, and that means that I'm gonna be like the perfect baby mother, and I'm gonna be like wifey material. Mm. Um, whereas if you have sex on a first day, it's never really been a problem for me. No, like me I've neither. gone into loads of relationships with people that I've mm, shagged like literally. half an hour from meeting them. I just feel sorry for all the ones <clears> that I did go through. When I was doing, when I was in the midst of my hoe phase, because I feel like, I feel like everyone has or will end up having a hoe phase, where that's just what I call it. So I had a hoe phase where I was just like, I just want sex. I just, and it was like, it's quite sad when I think about it because I was just trying to fill that internal void of I didn't feel good enough, mm. and I was just out of a relationship and then I was seeking validation in men but actually just fucking harming myself even yeah. more. And that's, I completely agree. This is what my whole sh- Edinburgh show was about. was about um, I'd gone through a breakup and then after that had literally just like serial dated people because I couldn't face being mm. alone. And I think being a, like, being a slut is amazing and like do it if you're doing it for the right healthy reasons. But if it's making you feel worse afterwards, then like maybe have a break because it is that feeling of like when you try and fill a void with sex and then actually afterwards you feel more empty. Yeah. It's counterproductive. If I was to want to do comedy as a woman, I don't know why, but in my head, I would feel a little bit like, oh, like just personally, I feel like I would feel that fear of... As a woman, am I going to be looked at? What's it called? Is it sexism where people kind of judge you based on like your profession? And well, it, I mean, in comedy, it's it's wild. Like how much, um, like for instance, <clears throat> people hate it. Like when I do stand up, I wear like crazy outfits, and I always have like. I very often you can see my entire boobs like when I'm on stage and people find that really like confusing because they're like well you're supposed to be funny like why are you dressed also like attractively like you're supposed to be there like you can't be both of those things you can't be like sex- sexualized and also be funny you can exactly but it's this very exactly it's this very like old school way of like looking at it and me and my friends who are like we're like all coming up like at the same time have really observed how like getting your tits out like having like great boobs and having them out on stage doesn't take away from like the quality of your stand up mm. but it's a way that like some men I have had men's like and male comics and just men say to me like it's a bit distracting mm. that you've like got your tits out while you're doing comedy because people mm. are just looking at your boobs and I'm like no you you are because you're like a that's moron. your mindset, mate. Yeah, you're an, you're an idiot. Like you can't yeah. multitask. Like you can look at my oh, boobs and listen to what I'm saying. I'm thinking with my dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no. like, you can do both of those things at once. Mm. Um, if you you know have a high enough intellect, it's not my problem that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. So it's like it's it's a weird, really weird world. But I've just been so conscious since I started doing stand up and like more in the last few years to just like not even engage in any of it and just like do my own thing. And, you know, people enjoy my shows and the people that don't, don't come back. But mm. most people love it. And then that, that will just continue to flourish. Mm. But, like, it's not my problem if people don't like like me or think that my tits are too nice or distracting. <laughs> it's quite a compliment, <laughs> really, human. isn't it? Thanks for boosting my ego, <laughs> darling. <laughs> I feel flattered. Do you get 
obviously there's pros and cons to any job. And like with my industry, it would be trolls, haters, online comments, all of that. With stand-up comedy, do you get like hecklers? Has there been like any instances that have really stood out or has that not happened yet? No, there have been. There ha I mean, not for years. I feel like when I started, it was definitely something that happened more because like my dad was in the public eye, what is in the public eye, he's not dead. Um, and... <laughs> And so at the beginning, because I wasn't confident enough to be able to handle, like, people saying stuff about my dad, people could smell that. Now I feel it's much more rare that that happens because even, like, when people heckle me, I'm... Touch wood, but it's not really a touch wood. I'm so good at making them look like the idiots in the situation now. <laughs> good. That then they just, like, they look like a fool. Like, I remember there was this one guy in Edinburgh who, like, when I was doing my show at the Fringe, who just kept talking, and so I ended up... He was someone like, in the front row? No, he was, like, at the back, but he just kept talking. It was like we, he thought we were having, like, a two-way conversation, and it's so distracting for me. Like, if I hear people speak, I stop, I stop the whole show. I'm like, I'm sorry, somebody's having, like, a more interesting conversation than me, so let's just, like, wait for it to happen. Because I can't have... I'm very, yeah. like... I do, like, neg the audience quite a lot because it, that's just, like, my thing. It's like, yeah. if you're talking while I'm talking in real life, I'm like, shut up, I'm talking. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, Don't be rude. rude. Yeah. Um, anyway, this guy just kept going, kept going, kept going. And in the end, like, he eventually, like, walked out because I was just, like, ripping him to shreds. <laughs> and, like, whenever I was doing anything, I'd refer back to him and what he thought. Um, so uh, he hecklers I haven't had for a few years. But, like, when people, like, chat while I'm talking, I'm like, know your place. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that takes a very strong person to do that because, or someone that's just, yeah. <laughs> For me, I don't feel like I would be quick enough. I really want you to teach me, like whether it's now, whether it's after, because it must help. It's just a skill. It's just, you just learn it. Like, Do you learn it, it or are you born with it? I think it's a bit of both. Like, I definitely know now since I've been doing stand up and since I've gotten like good at stand up that I see myself in social situations and I am much quicker mm. at responding to things or like t joking about things. But I think that came from me just consistently doing stand up and hosting a lot. Like, I host a live show. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be quick on your feet with quick those. Because you well, talk yeah. to the audience. I talk to the audience so much. And I think actually more like where my most of my assets, which people always say, is like when I talk to the audience, it's just because I love talking to people in real life. And whenever I talk to people in real life, if they're like on my level, I will rip them to shreds. Because mm -hmm. like whatever they say, it's like funny. And especially if you're talking about dating. And like yeah, people exactly. always have like, like I love it when there's, in my shows there are always girls who have come with like the most main character energy. And they're like <gasps> so ready to like tell me their life. Life stories and if that was one of my mates I'd be like okay shut up I'm talking now do you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's just that same so it's just you just get better at like transferring I guess what your personality would be mm -hmm. but like on stage but it's yeah. like a skill you yeah. you will be developing that now from doing this podcast 100% yeah, definitely I do feel it I feel like it's almost like just I feel more comfortable in mm. myself so, like, obviously, to do stand-up, you have to be quite comfortable and co confident in, like, who you are as a person because there is no way I'd be able to do that if I didn't know who I was. Do you know what I mean? But you stand for certain things, like, is it feminism? Yeah, I talk a lot about... I mean, <clears throat> on stage, I talk just, like, a lot about sex and, like, men and actually how much, like, I'm obsessed with men. Um, <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Penis! <laughs> So off brand. My favourite word. I love them. Um, but I talk, yeah, I talk a lot about like women's stuff, but I hate that. That like sounds so ick. Um, orgasms, like the, the shit behaviour of men. I think like what a lot of my material comes back to, especially at the moment, is like the problems that mm. we have like in relationships, like as women with men mm. and like the ways that like I find men like so funny and ridiculous and like irritating but it's relatable though yeah it's relatable and i've seen it from doing this podcast because yeah. people are like oh my god like yeah that's like if that happens in every relationship and i feel like when you portray that to an audience it's like it almost it almost gives them that sense of ease and comfort because they're like oh, i'm not the only one i'm not the only one that's experienced this or in like sex and dating and 
I've had a guy fall asleep on me whilst I'm, I've been sucking his dick before. Oh, yeah. yeah like, yeah, and yeah. I didn't know that was normal until a couple of girls have said, yeah, that's happened to me. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I thought I needed to go for lessons yeah. or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It just proper dented my, my confidence. But speaking about it, just like anything. I think so. And I think now it's like we get like... We get so much of that kind of therapy from, like, there are so many amazing women who, like, just talk about this stuff so candidly. And every time you hear it, you just do feel a little bit less, like, weird. Mm. Or even I'm listening to a book at the moment about, like, um, t toxic relationships and, like, unhealthy relationships. And oh, honestly, some of the stuff, I'm like, I really thought I was the only person in the world who'd ever, like, experienced some of these mm -hmm. things. And then as soon as you hear that, you're like... God, I wish I had this few years. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, then you, What's that book called? It's called um, uh, Why Did You Stay by Rebecca Humphreys. And she was the woman who um, her partner, Sean Walsh, was one who cheated on her. He was oh, doing no. Strictly. Do you remember that guy who was doing Strictly? He was a comedian. And then he got caught cheating on her with his dancer. I can't remember. Anyway, and then she's written this whole book about their relationship. Well, about the relationship. And it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Like, wow. I really recommend it. But it's stuff like that when you hear it you're, and then it just feels like so much more normal. I don't know how I've gotten there from my stand-up. But... <laughs> well, we love it. Yeah. And at least you've educated us on a book yeah. about toxic relationships. I'll be reading that one later. Um, I've always wanted to know, right, when you're writing your material, obviously I've heard and I've seen YouTube videos and how it works and all of that, that they use material that have happened in their lives, to give them certain points of inspiration, whether it be a breakup or toxic relationship or things that are just relatable to everyone, right? The, the jokes that you write about certain people that include certain people, do they actually know that they're about them? So, like, do you have to sit mm. down and, can, and tell them, oh, by the way, you're in my new material? Or is it just, like, they come along and you're like, you... So with men, like my friends, when they're in it, they absolutely love it because they're all like raging narcissists. So they love just like <laughs> some attention. Um, with men, it is funny because obviously when I had a boyfriend, like I would say, by the way, I'm talking about this. And I'm talking about that like in terms of like our mm -hmm. relationship and my ex was chill about that. Um, with men that I'm like seeing, I've noticed there are two types of men. Okay, this is my theory that I have, which is so good because I couldn't put this in my show. I, I love a theory. Time. So there are two types of men. Men who um, don't ever want me to talk about them in my stand-up. Okay. And men who absolutely love it yeah. when I talk about them in my stand-up. And what I've observed is the men who love it when I talk about them in my stand-up come really loudly. And the men who do not want me to talk about them in my stand-up make absolutely no noise when they come. Fuck. Like, you know when someone comes and it's so quiet, it's like a ghost has, like, passed through the room? It's, yeah. But that's my theory. Okay. And I think men in their truest form is when they're having an orgasm. <laughs> and so the really, like, the ones who make absolutely no noise, they, they don't want to be... They don't want a trace in my work. No. And I've really observed... I've, I've tried... I've tested this on like six men okay and so, it's true it's true to form so out of that right out of those two categories then what do you do with them do you then steer towards the ones that don't make any noise or the ones that are the narcissists that make really loud well, noise what i've noticed is like the i'm more attracted to the the ones who like love it and yeah. like are louder same but then they always turn out to be the more difficult like people mm -hmm. in terms of because i in a relationship also in general like I'm very difficult and have, like, um, a lot of problems and also... Like, I just have a lot of mental health problems and also um, have an ego and so sometimes find it hard to not get what I want. Mm -hmm. And so, but usually those men are also very similar to that. Like, if I was yeah. a man, I'd fucking come really loudly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and so often we clash. <laughs> yeah. It's like butting heads, isn't it? I've mm. always said, like, regarding to one of my exes, there was an interview, um, I think it was just at the end of this red carpet, and they mentioned him because there was an article, and they were like, oh, so how was you and your ex? How come you've broke up? And I just went, listen, there is not enough room in this relationship for, for two egos mm -hmm. as big as what ours were. It was it just did not work. It's all about balance, isn't it? It's all I about know, balance. but then what's hard, it is all about balance, but then what's hard is if you are attracted to people with, mm. like, 
that level of like confidence and like mm. ego. But so, because that's what I, I'm always trying to rejig in my head is like, actually, maybe I should be with someone who's like slightly more, um, what's the word? Less narcissistic. Yeah, but it's not even that because it's like someone just like a bit calmer and yeah. like slightly more passive. But then I'm like, but that isn't. See, I take that for I, a full advantage. If I'm with yeah. someone and they're a submissive, I walk all over them. Well, that's the thing. And um, I've always been told since I was like a teenager that I need to be with someone who like sort of, to an extent will like put me in my place and not yeah. let me get away with like a lot of my antics. It's boundaries, isn't it? Oh, it's a minefield. <laughs> <laughs> Something I've always wanted to know, right? Because I've seen some of your um, your TikToks are fucking jokes, by the way. Um, yeah, I've seen some of your <laughs> your content, and I want to hear it from your mouth because for me, my head's. <laughs> I need to visualize it to fully understand it, and obviously, I I kind of know what a fe- what makes a feminist, but. For someone that's in it more than I am, mm-hmm. I would like you to educate me a little bit. If that's okay. okay, so I mean, I like personally, I used to be like so um, outspokenly like feminist, and now there are things about it, like in terms of like there are loads of like, well, I'll come on to that. But I think per- like being a feminist or like is just literally thinking that like we should all be equal. Something as simple as the gender pay gap. So in the UK. Like, you know, for for exactly the same job, a man will, like, on average get paid 8% more than a woman. And then on top of that, like, being a woman costs more. They're, like, much more, like, expensive. Well, yeah, because we have fucking periods. Exactly. And also, but also, like, most of our, like, basic hygiene products are just, like, up price because they've got, like, pink labelling on them. Or... Yeah. So that's, like, a really, like, basic example where I find it difficult that anyone believes that that should be so. I don't get that. I really don't get it. You've literally just educated me on that. That's, I yeah, think that's it's disgusting. mad. It's Does mad. that mean I'm but a feminist? But even at, like, the BBC, yeah, there are, like, massive, like, hosts and, like, big names at the BBC where... A, a male equivalent to a female equivalent is being paid millions more. And, like, that's what the whole... Fuck one off. of the big dramas of that film, Don't Worry Darling, which I've been following heavily on TikTok, which is the Harry Styles, Olivia Wilde, like, drama, is that Florence Pugh was getting paid less than Harry Styles. And that was one of the, like... You know, that happens in Hollywood all the time, and I know it's like, who gives, who cares about, like... You know, when one person's getting 11 million, the other person's getting eight. But it's like... It's, yeah, a, but it's, 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 just, it's consistently throughout society. Yeah. And it comes down to men are valued more than women. Women are seen as less valuable because they, like, might have a baby. And then, like, you know, there's, like, more of a time limit. Or, like, that's why, like, women are less likely to be hired for certain jobs. I think all of these basic notions are, like, why everyone should be a feminist because it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And I'm obsessed with how many men there are who become a feminist once they have a daughter <laughs> and then do you know what I mean like there's yeah. so many men in the public eye who are like until I had Sophia I didn't think I was a feminist but now I'm like I want my baby to get the same like options uh, as... well of course you fucking do because it's now yeah like your daughter that you have yeah. to deal with but so it's like, that's just why everybody, we should all be, you know, femi- feminist. I get why there's like a, people have like a weird reluctance to say the word. Um, but as long as you like believe all of that stuff and like try and mm. actively fight to change it, I don't really care about yeah. whether or not you're calling yourself a feminist. Yeah, like, definitely. It's more it's about the like, what are you, you put, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. to try and change that? And I just feel like in general, like men could be a bit better about like if they find out that they're getting paid more, more than a woman for a job, that they should interrogate that they themselves. They could question it, yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Well, what... Because I feel like in every path of life and every direction that we take and every footstep we take in a certain direction, there's always something that has pushed us to that first step. So was there something that happened, maybe an ex-partner or something like seeing the statistics online that made you think, do you know what, I'm going to do something about this, I'm going to speak about it. Do you speak about it in your stand-up? Um, not really, because like, I just like, I'm not that into like comedy being like too like preachy or political, but I, I've all, do you know what it is? It's all come from, I've always been like really loud and just very naturally quite like, I hate the word like, not bossy like dom- 
dominant, right? Mm-hmm. That's always been like my energy. And I think one of the reasons why like I started being really like keenly aware of like sexism was because I was always treated weirdly because of that, like by men or boys, whatever. And I always felt like my behavior was slightly like punished because mm-hmm. I was just like confident. Mm. And I think that's just like, it's such a classic thing of like the way that we like pitch a man's behavior versus a woman's behavior. Yeah. Where like me just being like really confident is just like either like too much or yeah. like. It's um, like when I get into a relationship, sometimes me and Nicole always say this. So we always say just be yourself when you first go on a date with someone because you would much rather the guy know who you are from the fucking get-go because if he doesn't like you, he will not entertain you from that second date. And she's always said to me, um, if you're loud, if you're confident and if you're bubbly, some men do get intimidated by that and it's not normal. That's what the the, like the stigma is and that... Oh, I don't know how well, to it makes them it, it makes them question what their purpose is going to be. Mm. So like th- I've had this with so many men like not just in dating capacities but like work, friendships, whatever where it's like if you are completely self-assured then they don't know what they're going to be able to like offer you because they want to like help you they want to like you know like they want to be able to be that person that can like make you feel more confident about yourself yeah. but if you already feel that then it may it slightly yeah. diminishes like their like worth or, or their like purpose yeah or, yeah but that so that's sense. why they then flip it and try and make you feel like shit like in this yeah in this book that I'm reading but also like something that I'm just like really aware of is that like actually like the amount of times that I've been in situations with men where like they've whenever I'm challenging them gone out of their way to make me feel insane or like Mm. the problem um or like too needy Mm. when I'm just literally asking for something super basic basic necessities like reply to me after Mm. a week yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're fucking bothering me. Just just reply. Yeah. And then it makes you feel like a psycho. I mean, it ha- it's, it's happened to me so much. Like, since I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, like, I've just had so many um, situations where I felt like I am insane. And it's only now that I've had a break from, like, dating. Mm-hmm. And I have had a period of time, like not off of sex but off of like dating and actually Mm. like developing relationships with people where I can see how much it was just like uh, I was just asking for really basic things and also the problem is is that like men will start off a situation offering you that Mm -hmm. um but then once you start like wanting Mm. more or like asking for more they're like they get disinterested you were the one who spoke about like what we were going to call our babies like within the first 24 hours yeah that was you and now you're like you are just like way too demanding yeah I'm I'm, the mixed messaging is so much (laughs) I don't get it (laughs) for fuck's sake and then and they fall asleep on you when you're sucking yes, the dick. Classic. The audacity. Have you ever been like midway through a sexual encounter and <laughs> thought, um, this is gonna make great fucking stand-up material? Oh, I need to just really, I have a hundred percent I have, but I need to just like really like rack my brain here. Cause I mean, I've I've got like a um well to be fair, I'll just think about what's in my show. Um I've got like a, a whole bit in my show about how um how much men think I'm like I'm the kind of girl that wants to be choked and like I must really vibe like you do give off that vibe a little bit really yeah I'm not gonna lie no 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 that's really interesting because yeah. I also give off anal don't I mm, I mean I don't know I think I give off anal you look like a rider I am a rider oh that you? is true teach yeah. me <laughs> No, I am a rider, but I I'm I don't like being choked. No, no, no. Okay. Because I have really bad anxiety. So oh, like no. I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna kill me. <laughs> With one of my exes, I mean? we had fucking code words, tap outs, we had different fucking <laughs> eye movements. <laughs> like, eye movements, that's where way I, too subtle. Where I would like tell him without telling him because I couldn't fucking breathe um <laughs> quite dangerous by the way if you are listening I'm not suggesting it I I think eye movements that's, that's way too subtle what if he just misses so, well, that well I think the eye movement was almost me like 
passing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just, I was just, just, I was just like fucking dying. Flagging that you're on your way. Yeah, so back to the material. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that I, mean, I got with someone recently and um, with the choking thing, he... It was really funny because he kept, like, going to choke me, but I was like, oh, can you not do that? Because that's fine. I get mm-hmm. it. Like, people like being choked. Um, and then he would do this thing where he was trying to, like, he'd remember, he'd want to choke me, but then he'd remember, because obviously such a courteous guy, so and I would bless do? him, like, style it out by, like, ah! sort of, like, combing his hair, or, like, he would, like, style it out by, like, reaching for something. So, do you know what I mean? He'd, like, go to do that, but then, like, so completely do something else. It's like and that. that. Yeah, yeah, it was literally like, like that. like, just chill. I know. So that, I remember thinking, oh, and he was 24. <laughs> do you go for younger guys or older guys? I'm, like, the last few months, I've slept with a few younger people and I'm a bit like, no, no. No? Well, it's just like, they have way less experience and don't know what they're doing as much. See, I don't but think... But again, I... that's, you know, me offering, like... <sighs> Education. Yeah. You're fucking changing the world one day at a time, Grace. I know. I'm a real giver. Honestly, yeah. you're, you're helping them. So wait, you, uh, you don't think I vibe anal? No. But you think I vibe choking? Kind of. Only because you're quite... And I'm a rider. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. See, the rider bit is actually a really good compliment. Because <laughs> it means you've got a nice bum. Mm. And if I had a batty, I'd be backing it right up. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, do, you, do you talk about, like, do you break stigmas in your, in your stand-up? And when you talk on social media, like, what kind of direction do you go? Just for people that haven't listened to your content before. It's very, like... Um, all, like all like my book was a lot about all of the things that I felt ashamed of at points in my life that I now realize it was just like such misplaced shame that wasn't mm. actually about me like for example like I started masturbating when I was so young mm, same but I thought I was like perverted yeah I thought there's something really wrong with me and mm. I was gonna like go to prison because mm. I was like nobody's told me that like mm. that this is normal, this is normal. That I'm like humping a teddy at like mm. age seven or whatever Anyway, so then when I when someone finally told me when I was like twenty one, someone told me that women masturbate. Twenty one, that was the first time that somebody had ever said it to me. You're joking. No. And then I was like, oh my god, no way! So you do that as well? And she was like, yeah, it's normal. And I was like, oh my god, like that's what like fourteen years mm. since my first fucking like wank. <laughs> <laughs> 14 years I've spent for no reason yeah, thinking shaming that myself. I'm like a freak. Yeah. And so it's all like those things where I think, I mean, even like, I remember when I first fanny farted, I went to the doctor and I was like, there's something really wrong with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what and did I'm you a say? massive hypochondriac, so I was like, it's for sure cancer. Like, just let oh, me know which no. one because it's for sure cancer. Like, there's like air passing. <laughs> <laughs> and she was oh like, you God. are a f- drain on the NHS. Like, no. go home right now. <laughs> I love a good old queef. Yeah, I love a queef now. Oh, my do you know, God. Do you like, have you ever experienced it, right? When you queef <laughs> or when you fart and it rolls up your lips. Oh, and yeah, it yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh. I, I can do it on demand now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a real skill. Like, I've got a bit of my show about this, but I once put a Maltese in my vagina, which is <laughs> such a bad idea. Um, do not do it. <laughs> <laughs> and Fanny farted it out with precision into my ex-boyfriend's mouth. What a fucking skill. I'm I know. I'm at that. No, it's like huge talent. Oh, Grace, I have never, ever, ever. And it was like with precision. Like that should be in the fucking Olympics. Yeah, like basketball. (laughs) That should be in the Olympics. But I can do it now. Do you know what it is? I do a lot of yoga, and um, it was when I started doing loads of yoga that I started like accidentally fanny farting a lot. Like, and it would happen at yoga like all the time, where I'd be like just like queefing the whole time. So what I've done is you know strengthen those muscles so that now mm-hmm. i can just use it as a force for good like yeah if there's a dick in that i don't want in just eject exactly it's like that film teeth <laughs> have you seen that film there's a film my called vagina teeth. doesn't have teeth in it well i mean she starts <laughs> having sex with guys and all of a sudden she tenses and her fanny grows teeth oh, it's called teeth 
And she just runs around having sex with people. She doesn't As even... a way of like revenge, like, and then yeah. cutting their dicks off. She just snaps the dicks off. That's epic. And leaves them. Mm -hmm. So every week we get sent a listener DM. So someone that is uh, in the banging community that would love our advice. <laughs> so if you are just joining the podcast and you don't know how to get us to give you advice on some of your dilemmas and stuff, just DM the Insta, which is banging with Chloe B pod. Um, and you can also email us. We've got a, an email, very official. It's bangingwithchloev at gmail.com. So are you ready? Mm -hmm. Some of them are wild, by the way. I love it. I spent a summer abroad in Germany and met this guy, really hot, really hot German guy. We went on dates and hooked up and continued talking after I went back to California. We still talk all the time, but it's never serious. We're making plans for him to come and visit and stay with me for a bit, but I'm so confused about what's going on between us because we've not talked about anything serious. How do I have these conversations with him? Oh, oh God. Oh. Uh. <laughs> um, uh, I don't envy at all. I mean, this if is why I'm perpetually <laughs> single. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if he's still talking, she was interested. I think if someone's talking about flying across the world to come and see you, then that's a way of implying that they're interested, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I also think that there's nothing that gives me the ick more than being like, what are we? It's just like, I mean, you have to do it. My my best advice is never leave anything unsaid. Like, if there's something that you want to say and get off your chest, just say it. And I can't actually handle some people who don't do that. Yeah. Because it's like, you're you're wasting your time. Yeah. You might as well know now before, yeah. like, you know, the person you walk past on the street you didn't catch eye contact with is actually the love of your life. You might exactly. as well know now. Fuming. So you just have to say in, like, a not cringe way, like, what is going on here? Yeah. Like I always think, right, so, like, sorry to interrupt you, but I always think a really good way to, like, have that conversation about having it is um, mention if they're getting with other people. Yeah. So say, like, have you ever, got, like, have you gotten with anyone, like, since I've been away? Or, like, I, I, that's been a way for me to kind of gauge, like, how serious someone is in a yeah. situation is, you know, saying, like, I haven't actually, like... Definitely. I mean, my toxic side, like screams just post a picture of you out having a drink or dinner with someone and do that famous photo where you're just getting the two plates of food in and, and like a see, bit of a hand yeah and yeah. see what he says because if he bites at that and if he's like who are you with then he's clearly he cares mm. and he's like okay so who is she with? And then maybe that will kind of instigate a conversation. It's almost like reverse psychology, getting them to ask you before mm. you ask them. But then I think that might be a little bit toxic. I mean, it's toxic, but also it's like, I don't know if I would like love it when if someone was like, who are you with just from that? Because then I'm like, oh, you're really jealous. Like, that's going to mm. be a problem because... I'll make you jealous all the time. <laughs> yeah. But I think that is a good way. I also just think like being like... Um, I remember that's how I once got someone to be in a relationship with me is because I was like, have you slept with anyone else since we've been seeing each other? And he was like, one person. And I said, okay, I don't want you to sleep with anyone else now. Oh, wow. And then that's how we got together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but that is very direct and very to the point. And it yeah, gets, and it, it can it backfire. Gets, but yeah, but if it does, you've got know. your answer. Yeah. If it backfires and you've got your answer, do you I know what I mean? So. Like, I think so. I just think it's better to just say it, like, yeah. in my personal opinion. But I know that's much easier said than done. Like, I know it is hard to be like, you know, yeah. this is what I want. I mean, I'm just trying to think, if, have I ever been in that situation? Yeah, who am I kidding? I've definitely been in that situation thousands of times with men where I'm like, where do I stand? But, I mean, there's this one guy that always pops up in my life, right? And we meet at nightclubs and he texts me, do you want to come home with me? And all my friends are like, why are you wasting your time? Because he doesn't ever have a serious conversation with me. It's always what you're wearing or you look really sexy or replying to my stories. But actually, nothing changes if nothing changes. Like, I need to either imply a conversation by saying what you've just said or just say, listen, I'm really horny. I want to know if I can fuck anyone else or not. 
Yeah, but also and don't you exclusive? Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Are you gonna fill the hole or but not? That's a good way of doing it, I think. Mm. Is by saying, "Are we shagging other people?" Because yeah. then the prospect of me shagging someone else—if that makes you be like, "Oh fuck, no, I don't want you to get with anyone else," then you're like, yeah. "Okay, cool." So, so we're exclusive then. Like, <gasps> that's just how you can say it. Yeah, I get tingles whenever someone's like, "We're exclusive." I'm like, oh. <laughs> "Really?" I'm like, "Ick." <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love the old. Do you want to be my girlfriend? What? <laughs> I love it. I'm like, yeah. Can I be your princess? And then I, and then I start talking like baby. Oh um, God, <laughs> Grace! I think we couldn't be. We, we are different. We are different, babe. I scream anal. You vibe anal. Do I? Do you love anal? No. Do you know who loves anal? Who? Liz Truss, our new prime minister. <gasps> Does she? Famously, no lube. You are. Joking. That is an exclusive. She is very... No, there's loads of rumours going around that she, like, loves anal. Oh, wow. I mean, good on her. Mm. Good on her. As long as not she douches. Not the lube thing, though. Like, yeah, come no. on, grow up. Grow up! Why would you not use lube if it's, like, there? <laughs> like, it exists for a reason. <laughs> it's probably, like, a contr- like a, an empowerment thing. Yeah, it's I don't like need a way no to be like, I'm a girl boss. Yeah, I'm a girl boss. I don't, <laughs> I don't need, need no lube. lube. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway... Um, <laughs> Just fucking have a conversation with him. Have a conversation with him and I really hope that things do work out and he comes over and you have the most amazing sex you've ever had and he asks you to be his wife. Yeah. Yeah. So, Grace... Get that German... That German that passport. German Schneiser. <laughs> oh, I thought Get you meant... Get that EU passport. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the... Is Germany in the EU? Yeah. Oh, are we in the EU? <laughs> no. Fuck. Famously. So does that mean he could get a green card if he came over and married That her? means that marrying a German is more useful than marrying an English person because you can be in the EU rather than in Miss Anal's country. <laughs> For fuck's Miss sake. dry anal, no lubes fucking territory. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> I'm just never going to look at Liz the same now. Yeah, I know, but you'll see it and then you'll be like, oh, I get I it. I get it now, yeah. It's an anal girl. I'll, um... <laughs> I'll look out for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a game. Um, just to close out the interview, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to do with me for the podcast. Um, we're going to play a game of Amazing Disgrace. Okay. All right? All right. Um, I'm going to read you out a quote and you're going to tell me if you said this or some other famous Grace said this. Oh my God, that's cute. Yeah, okay, have you got a good yeah. memory? Yeah, I've got an amazing memory. Okay. <laughs> First one, I don't want to be a personality. That was not me. Okay. <laughs> 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 that, I'm, can I guess who said that? Yeah. Um, Grace Kelly? Yeah. Was it? Grace Kelly. Extra yeah. bonus point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have got good, uh, good Well, memory. no, I'm just ga- gauging that because I could imagine her saying that. It's not like Oh, I've just realised the answers are on the card. And I've just... Sorry, yeah. The, Grace Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually... Yeah, it's Grace Kelly. <laughs> um, okay, great. Oh, yeah. Wow. The next one. Oh, I love it because it says condoms. Um, <laughs> use condoms... Don't just ask someone if they have an STI. Ah, uh, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love yeah. that. Mm. I think I'm definitely going to get that tattooed on me. Because mm. I've got everything mm. happens for a reason there. Yeah. And then get used condoms. And I don't think just everything ask. happens for a reason, including STIs, if you don't use condoms. Yes. But also, it is not an effective contraception method just to say to someone, do you have any STDs? And them saying no. Because they can That's lie. No, yeah. They obviously don't know as well. Yes. So don't do that. Use a condom. <laughs> exactly. Or they're just hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> and they do, they just want you to catch something. Yes. Because they want to trap you. Yes. Into that shame mm. that we don't want to feel anymore. Mm. Now, next quote. Women love me. <laughs> Women love me and men don't know what to make of me. I would say that was probably me, but it could have been Grace Jones. <laughs> What one are you going with? Mm, I'm sure that was me. Yeah, it was yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> so women love me and men don't know what to make of me. Yeah, I I, I get that. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's something that we, we both have that energy. It's very like, because yeah. I like have such like 
quick and strong relationships with women. And I think men, and by the way, I mean straight men here. I don't mean gay men because all gay men love me as well. Um, it, it's just like they're a bit like, mm, I don't know if I find you attractive because you're not really like my type, but like there's something... There's something there's about a bit, you. It's like a, mm, but you're funny and that's giving me the ick. Like there's a lot going on in their silly little heads. Yeah. <clears throat> Fuck them all. <laughs> Fuck them all. That's my answer to everything. Mm. So that was me. <laughs> that was you. Mm. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for, for joining me. us on the podcast. Um, we've got the same type. And uh, we've, I've learned a lot about you and I love it because the people that are listening are definitely going to have learned as much as I have from you because everything you've said is relatable. Where can they find you on social media to um, continue the laughs? Disgrace Campbell. Okay. That is my handle. For? For Instagram and TikTok. And then also come and see one of my shows because it will be much lived up to the expectation that I would have created <laughs> from yeah. it. It won't disappoint. <laughs> okay, amazing. Thank you so much. Grace Campbell, me. everyone. Until next time. Woo-hoo-hoo! Bangin' with Chloe Beach is part of the Eve Podcast Network and a Forever Dog production. Executive producer, Tracy Soren. Development executive, Mariah Nicholas. Senior producer, Paloma Kaufman. Producer, Ewan Newbigging Lister. Post producer and theme song, Brian Hevron Smith. Cover photo by Greg Bailey. Forever Dog Productions is Joe Cilio, Alex Ramsey, and Brett Boehm.